when Jackson Cage Hollis came screaming into the world an hour later, I don't know which of us was more exhausted. I do know that all the pain I'd been riding above came rushing back in a tidal wave so intense I still can't believe I managed to ignore it for so long. It's one of the greatest reminders I have in my life that you can choose your attitude, your focus, and your intentions for any situation, no matter what it is. That choice is often the difference between joy and suffering. You can drink the water and wake up early and have a plan and work on it every day, but if you don't have the right attitude, you're dead in the water. All right, fine, maybe dead in the water is a little dramatic, but I get pretty dramatic about mindset and attitude and reaching for positivity because it matters so dang much. When my children are acting insane and the house is trashed and I'm seriously contemplating running away with the circus or drinking an entire box of wine, forcing myself to have a positive attitude is what saves me. When my book is due, like right now, this book was due yesterday, and yet here I am still writing it, and work is overwhelming, and my travel schedule is bananas, choosing to find the positive in every bit of it is how I stay happy. Happy, not just sane, not just okay, not just getting by, but happy. I am happy and appreciative and feeling blessed 90% of the time, and that's not because my life is unfolding in a way that makes that easy. I am one of the happiest gals you know because I choose it every single day. I choose to practice gratitude. I choose to surround myself with things and people who support positivity. I regulate my thoughts because thoughts control feelings. The words and phrases we use with ourselves become the soundtrack playing in the background of every moment of our lives, and there's not a single thought, good or bad, that you don't allow to be there. Are you actively monitoring that? Are you working to control the way you think about yourself and speak to yourself? Because you are not stupid, so stop telling yourself that you are. You are not ugly, so stop thinking it, even occasionally, when you look in the mirror. You are not a bitch, even if you've done bitchy things in the past. You are not ignorant, or mean, or unlovable, or unworthy, or falling short, or any of the other stupid crap running through your mind. You have to choose to be positive to see possibility, and to see the blessings in your life each day. You choose your thoughts, and there isn't one thing running through your mind that you don't allow to be there. So every time you find yourself thinking something negative, remember DMX. Stop yourself, drop the hateful litany, shut them down, then replace them with good stuff. The hope is that whether you are in a season of ease or a season of hardship, you'll recognize that you're still in control of how you perceive it. Because this is real life, not a fairy tale. And I don't for one second think it's going to be easy every day, no matter who you are or where you live. Real life is going to suck sometimes, and you'll have whole seasons that rob you of the energy you need to pursue your goal. But you still have hopes and dreams and goals for yourself and your life and they are possible. Sometimes you're going to sprint at them headlong, and sometimes you're going to take the smallest inch forward. But you've got to keep yourself in the game. You cannot control the circumstances of your life. You can only control your reaction to them. Skill 6. Lead Her Ship in sixth grade, I took a picture inside a teepee. It was Girl Scout camp, circa 1995, and I still have the photo in an album covered with peace sign stickers and multiple artistic renderings of the Stussy S. In the photo, I'm dressed as a young Native American girl, as imagined by a young and ignorant white girl. Brown tie-dye and knock-off timberlands aren't a part of any tribal dress that I'm familiar with, 
But my 12-year-old self felt beyond cool to sit beneath that mock teepee for a solo picture donated by the local Olin Mills. Cultural appropriation aside, that particular Girl Scout experience sticks out in my mind for two reasons. One, because we made scrambled eggs by boiling them inside Ziploc bags. <laughs> Since I have never been a camper, these sorts of wilderness skills still seem highly impressive. And two, my best friend Amanda and I made up an entire dance routine to a Tim McGraw song and taught it to the whole squad. The song was Indian Outlaw. I mean, obviously. And it involved choreographed steps and moving into more than one formation. The dance was originally something we did during a break as a way to fight boredom. But it was, I'm hypothesizing here, so adorable to the assembled group of troop leaders, who were likely all a little bit in love with Tim and that creepy pencil handlebar mustache he was rocking back then, that we were asked to perform it at campfire. <laughs> 